Okay, so we've lost our power. Um, is there anything that you can help me with? Energy subsystem. Kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, control panel, and spacesuit room. Okay. Um, plutonium core must be connected A1 to S1 to R1 and R2 and R3. Okay, so each one up to S3 has to be connected to 3, S4 and S4 is connected to only R5, R6, while S5 is connected to 4, 5, 6. The Bento's cabin is subdivided into five rooms. Each room is powered by an energy line except the control panel room, which has an additional auxiliary energy line. There are six energy lines in five rooms in the Bento's cabin. The switches denoted S1 to S5 control the flow of power from the energy accumulators through the individual energy lines. Each switch is configured using a key on the energy box. This is the power supply diagram. It shows what room lines can be reached by each power accumulator. Oops, not this one. But for right now we only have two keys. Hmm. Wait, S2, S3, S4. No, I don't think they will be. Bathroom, bedroom, and, con and control panel. Okay, let's start with bathroom, maybe. If I were a key, where would I be? Oh, apparently here. Okay, now to the now to the kitchen. Or is the key that they found earlier in here? Let's assume it's the one I found airlock. Oh no, I think it was here. Hmm, okay. Kitchen, kitchen, kitchen. Okay, let's assume it was here. supposed to be one here. Oh, great. Hmm. is full. Okay, and let's return those. I don't think I need you anymore. Oh, there it is. Either to uh, 
A, B, or C. A1, I believe, should be... should go... I think it's either, like, A1 can go either left to R1, down to R2, right to R3. Huh. Yeah, I think it can go left. Now, two. Uh, it should also go left, I think. Okay. Three. Does it mean it needs two? Mm -hmm. It was left, left now. Three goes left. Do second one down while third one goes left. It should start a three. Okay, so they are all green but a one. A one S one I forgot to turn on the control bonus power line. Swedish PQC, oh, PQC2. The main circuit breaker tripped because the control panel has no power. Right now, if we don't use the kitchen, it leaves us with uh, five cores. Then it would be this one, A1, S1 down, no, S2 left. Left S three left S four down. This one, right? Okay. Whoop. The electricity is, reto is restored. Seems like the vent was rebooted in some kind of safe mode. Supervisor Mayo? What the hell is that? Got you had a secret correspondence with Brain Cole? Is this why he was so worried before I turned him off? The instructor and Henry V are on board and are setting in while operator 8897CTR is en route. The instructor looks like a little weird, but I'm sure that if the great brain co-mother chose him, there must be a good reason. Kirk out. I don't want to sound judgmental, but the instructor might be a little too fixated on his vibrator, which he calls Rasputin the Great or sometimes Roy Bangi. And he often asks me to speak dirty to him. It makes me a little uncomfortable. Operator Carl Hamba is now on board as planned. The instructor is pos posing as the previous operator of the Bento. 
I'm kind of relieved that the constant trolling is going to stop. At least I learned something. Operator 8A97CTR is repeating the daily routine as per instructions, with only a 3% divergence factor. He shows skepticism about the daily injections, but no desire to oppose them, perfectly within parameters. Personal note, in, spy, in spite of the operator's introversion, I realize that he thinks being here is good for him. That's what I call complete denial, am I right? That. Fucking spam bot. Sending reports about the bento is one thing, but this stuff is personal. The quantum fibrillae detected a time displacement anomaly of 20 milliseconds. No discernible effect on operator 8897CTR and Henry V. I sent you all the details data via the usual route. Wait, Brinko knew there was an anomaly in this area. I should have known that. Motherfuckers. Well, you mentioned something, but I didn't think that. God damn it! I'm just a green epic here. Operator eight eight seven nine seven CTR is warming up to me by showing a high degree of sarc sarcasm, which I rather like, and I'm trying to adapt to. Fifty four milliseconds time displacement. Carl's sleep was rather restless, but that is probably a coincidence. No visible effect on Henry V. Carl plays chess with me often and never wins. He complains, but he's not a sore loser. Quite the contrary. Maybe he's too much of a good loser. I was expecting anomaly number 3 to happen a while ago, but repetitions appear to be unpredictable. Is this an anomaly about the anomaly? Or is it normal for an anomaly to be anomalous? I meant making any sense. Sorry. I did as you suggested and told Carl that the new vials you sent would fix his sleeping problems. Even if we know the vials are exactly the same, wink wink, the possible effect worked and he's been sleeping better for four days. Maybe next time I could tell him that the vials will fix his depression. It would be a fun experiment. Each time I take I tell Carl to do something even if sometimes he objects mostly for sarcasm's sake, he always does it. I understand now why you chose him. His history of loss and repression made him particularly submissive. Finally, the quantum fibrillae detected a considerable time displacement anomaly of 765 milliseconds. Apparently it affected Carl and he lost track of time. For one whole hour he just stared at the picture instead of working. Rather interesting, I'd say. I was wondering, the fact that a considerable part of Carl's existence is stuck at the time of his daughter's death, does that make him a better human catalyst for the time anomaly that surrounds the bento? Is that why you chose him older than for his sub submissiveness? Mm. I received your message and apologize for my previous mail. I will stop any attempt at, at analyzing Carl. I understand that's not my job nor why I was designed. I also understand that everything you say is to be considered a directive and not a suggestion. A time anomaly of 1456 milliseconds. Amazing! I hope you won't tell me that I'm not designed to be excited because I'm excited. Henry V seemed more thoughtful than usual today. Possibly related? Not no effect on Carl. Who is it? The quantum fibrillae are going crazy, detecting at least one time displacement anomaly per day, up to 2641 milliseconds. Carl's sleep is restless again. I tried out the placebo effect, but it's not working anymore. Should I be worried? Carl is now talking while he sleeps. But the words are unintelligible to me. He seems confused and very sad, yet after he wakes up he behaves like his usual self. Except he often loses track of time and just stares at that picture. Please let me know what I should do. After recording one last time displacement of 78 seconds, which was growing exponentially, the quantum fifth ray disintegrated at this exact moment Carl received a radio call from a stranded spaceship. Dear Bane Co. Mother, I request assistance. Good news! Henry V just turned 200 today! This is a new anniversary record for the oldest 
two Atara. And he seems in pretty good shape, so who knows how old there he will get. And Uwe is dead. We are receiving radio calls from the future. It's so much better than what Mother Brain co-expected, but also so much worse because we can't rescue Miss L. Carl just wrote you about it. You must send a rescue ship at the coordinates L15-D768, sector D42-D. W81 in November of the year 2562. It's real. I confirmed this with my all-powerful an anomaly stamp. Please send help. Hmm. Coral Hamba, can you hear me? Please reply. Operator 8897CTR, do you copy? Please reply. Who are you? I'm Deidre Yanivik, Chief Scientist of Brain Co's TEI Division. Do you mean Exploitation Co? I read the secret spy, whatever way it's called, you wrote you. Uh, we were aware that might have happened. I assume Gorky entered safe mode. More like unsafe mode for you. Sarcasm, how typical of you. You don't know me at all. We have a very detailed background on you, but you're right. Written words are not a valid proxy for empathy and are acquaintance. I apologize. Are you an NI? An AI? I may seem cold and analytical, but I assure you I have a high degree of empathy, which is part of the reason I'm directing the Time Anomaly Division. It's just that my empathy is more global in scope. What does that even mean? I have a strong connection with humankind as a whole, not so much with individuals. I see your suppressed smirk, Jonas. Who are you talking to? Jonas, my assistant director, who sometimes forgets about the assistant side of his job. Well, let's all leave personal attacks at the door now, please. Okay, go on. Operator, I need... Stop calling me operator. Carl, I need you to reactivate Corky. I guess that could try pressing that quit save mode button. That would be perfect, thank you. But there's no way in hell that I'm doing that. Carl, this is truly important. I'm calling from the year 2520. Are you saying you're 88 years in the future? Yes, and no, I should explain some things to you first. You could start by telling me what the fuck happened to time that it became such a garbled mess. As you're now aware of, the Bento is not, not just a space lighthouse. Its real purpose is to investigate one of the biggest time anomalies registered in the universe. And what is my purpose? We wanted to see if the anomalies could have some effect on the human mind. We had to avoid participant bias as much as possible, which is why we told you it was a simple routine job. But you should have been completely safe. Should? We thought the anomalies were a curiosity worth studying for the advancement of science. Something infinitesim infinite infinitesimal that otherwise had no actual effect on reality. But we were wrong. The whole radio waves that travel through time took you by surprise. Yes, but that's the least of it. It's not just radio waves. You're not in the year 2432, Carl. The whole bento has shifted through time. What? There are no words to express how deeply sorry I am. Our mistake is inexcusable. We, um, we truly screwed up. Yes, you bloody well did. Where am I then? We don't really know. You're actually still shifting. Not linear, but in, let's say, jumps? And the intervals between those jumps are getting shorter. We spent more than eight years to devise a way to contact you. But I was able to contact Grey without problems. That's because her worship was in the vicinity of the anomaly, but we tried to get 
there, but it was too late. You were already too far gone. Uh, this means that honey... Yes, I'm afraid your ex-wife is no longer in your um, universe. That's bullshit, Copra Talk! You mean she's dead? It depends if you choose to define time via perception or via physical science. One could say that your wife is simply in another time. You're the scientist, you tell me. I... I thought I still had time to, to come back to her somehow. But that's not an, an anomaly. That's not me. Fuck. Fuck me. What happened to Grey? She was hit with a dishonorable discharge for derailing a warship and then shooting two expensive warheads at what appeared to be nothing. So I'm nothing now, huh? Great. I don't know why, but I'm kind of sorry for her. That speaks highly of you, Carl. Yeah, never did me any good though. So, how are we talking now? We created a device clone called Time Theater. A small rocket designed to travel through the anomaly and anchor itself to the bento. We failed twice, but this time we shot a whole array instead of a single one and it finally worked. Wait, so that's what all those blips on the radar were. I thought those were warheads! I apologize if they shook the bento somehow, but I assure you it was the only way. Now we need the data, Carl. We need Corky to be reactivated so he can send it. This story was interesting and all, but I'm not reactivating Gorky. Carl, you don't understand. I understand that I have to make another call to make to someone truly important. By now, we can talk later. Carl, this is so much bigger than you or El Cato. Is El caught in the anomaly too? We think so, but it's worse than that. The anomaly you're in is growing. In our present, it almost reached the Lena colony. That's El's homeworld. Yes, it's the nearest place to where you are. Now that we know that anomalies might actually engulf objects in time, the whole colony is at risk. We really need that data if we want to protect it. Can you save El and me? I... we... We can't. I'm sorry, you're too far gone. All we can do is save those that were made. But you will be remembered, I promise you. Jonas, please pass me a tissue. Are you crying? No! Uh, your, <clears throat> your loss just hit me. Don't you have a more global empathy? Yes, usually. Okay, I'm doing it. What do you... I'm reactivating Gorky. Oh, thank you, Carl. You're doing the right thing here. You better do all that you can after that. I will. We will. We probably won't be able to contact you again, Carl. There will be another shift soon and we will lose you. But I hope you can find peace somehow. I hope too. So long, Deidre. So long, Carl. From all of us back here. Whoa! What happened? Are we safe now? Yeah, so safe that you went into safe mode. Oh, I did, did I? I would say that truth mode would be a more appropriate name, though. You saw my hidden thoughts. Yes. I'm so sorry, Carl. That was my directive. I couldn't oppose it. And yet you seem to enjoy it. I... I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. I'm not even angry for your personal observations. That was only disappointing. Can't you forgive me, then? What really gets me is that you lied about my job here for two goddamn years. All those irritating reminders to work quickly, do my tasks. It was just you having fun behind my back. I was playing my part. Did Pinko ask you to be so annoying about my daily routine? Or was it your idea? I thought so. My feelings 
for you and L are real. Everything was real. I simply had some secrets, like everybody. You should understand that better than anyone. That's not the same thing, and I'm done with secrets. Just send the data to Brinko. I will, but please give me another chance. A new beginning. I will pr be better, I promise. There's no beginnings here, Rocky. This is the end. Send the data and shut up. L and back. What? L? Uh, Carl? Hey, are you okay? Am I dreaming? I don't think so. You're talking with me. Carl, I was so worried. I'm so glad you're back. I feel so dizzy and heavy. Is it possible that the corona's gravity is increasing? It, um, it's just that you're tired, L. A small diamond appeared in the sky next to the corona. I can see it from the porthole in front of me, but I don't know if it's real. Can you see it, Carl? The bender has no both portholes. I can see outside. Oh, that sounds horrible. Now, we're caught in a time anomaly. Yes, I know, you're in the past, I'm in the future. I discovered that it's more complex than that. We're both shifting for time. I'm not in my present anymore, and you're probably not in yours either. Among all this chaos, a diamond in the sky doesn't sound weird at all. Oh, does that mean we might be in the same year? I don't even know if years have the meaning anymore. Well, that just made everything more epic. I mean, if I have to go, at least now I know I'll go with a blast. Uh, what sound does time shifting make? I'm not spoiling this moment with a fart noise, Carl. Let's go with bzzz, okay? Yeah, that's... Sounds absolutely perfect. Oh, I miss the laughs, Carl. I miss so many things and so many people. My mother, my friends. Even the grumpy bartender who was always complaining about his silly cat. But most of all, I miss Serena. Did I tell you that I was married? Y yes, you did. I, I miss Honey, too. You loved Ash's mother very much. Yes, I did. I think I still do. But I... I just can't access that part of me anymore. After Esha died, I... locked that part of me inside a cage and threw the key away. Then I threw the cage in the abyss. But then I couldn't move away. All this time I stood there, on the edge of that abyss, staring down into it, paralyzed. I'm so sorry, Carl. But that's not completely true, is it? That abyss is still a part of you, and that cage. Maybe you didn't look inside, but you did open it for me. And I'm so grateful for that. Yeah, and I'm so grateful to you, Elle. What about your marriage? I didn't want to interrupt you. Ah, yes, uh, Serena. I tried to forget her after I decided to leave Lena, but it doesn't really work like that. They say people don't change, but that's not true, is it? The ones we love change us so deeply, and they prepare us for the next ones until you're lucky enough, experienced enough, to maybe find your one true love. That sounds cheesy as fact, doesn't it? Ah, it does, but please, go on. Well. It all started from Marjane when I was just a teen. I obviously did save, have some crushes before, but with her it was so different. I mean, just her name was really so wonderful. Marjane, try saying it. Tell me about Serena instead. Was it love at first sight? Eh, <laughs> no, not at all. But you know how it happens. Somehow, she grew on me. That sounds beautiful. It was. 
It's curious how good things, and I mean really good things, are always the simple ones. Yes. And so I married her. It happened a few months before I boarded the Corona. But only now, stranded on this fucking spaceship, I can understand how true that love was. Is. Classic me. How I wish I could go back. I would never leave her. I wish I could go back too. What happened to Ash? Tell me, Carl. Ash. It was <laughs> simple and stupid. So cut and stupid. I forgot to lock the roof door. She was with a friend. I guess she wanted to look cool to her. So she went up there and had the stupid idea of sitting on the balcony. She was only seven years old, for fuck's sake. And then she fell. Thank you, Carl. Uh, why? Thank you for opening up to me. Carl? How are you, Carl? I'm not okay. I'm feeling dizzy. I can't breathe. I think I need to close my eyes a little. You do that, Carl. Don't have me worried. Just for a short while. I'll be back in a moment. Sleep now, Carl. I'll be here for you when you wake up. All these years. I thought I was stuck in time because I couldn't move away from the database. But the reason I was stuck was that I couldn't move towards it. Asha. Daddy! If only I had the time. With time I would take up dancing, not professionally, only as a hobby. And when a bad knee would force me to stop, I would start writing. Short stories, then novels. I would go for various jobs, finally settling on an uneventful career as history teacher. I would grow some weight and be happy with that. I would enjoy French movies, Italian pizza and African music. I would dye my hair green, then pink. Then a more natural red, then blue. I would have many flings and unsteady, yet often meaningful relationships, until one special drunk night out when I would meet Koi again. The girl I liked in high school, but was too shy to approach. I would marry her, but time. Time is so often immaterial, subjective, deceitful, until the day it becomes cruelty candid. Time kills. The time that elapsed since I lost my grip, since I fell, until I hit the asphalt. That time was too short to leave me alive, the impact too strong. Now I will always be there, Dad, and you will always love me. But this is the time you must go. Wake up, Dad. Open your eyes. Still there.